Hey guys, so I was looking at my YouTube channel the other day and it appears to be about eight and a half months, nearly nine months, since I purchased and unboxed this Samsung Galaxy Fold 4. This was and still is the only folding phone I've ever owned. And obviously when I bought it, there was a honeymoon period. Everything was amazing, but I've been using this every single day for nine months now. So I know what I like and I know what I don't like. We've got a new Samsung Fold 5 coming out in a few months and there's many other folding phones coming out this year. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to take a step back and not do a review because there's many reviews out there, but really just reflect on my experience of using the Samsung Galaxy Fold 4 after nearly nine months. So it's gonna be more informal and let's do it backwards. Let's start off with some negatives and some things that I just don't like about the Samsung Galaxy Fold 4. So the first negative, the first con, the first downside to using the Samsung Galaxy Fold 4, for me, it has been typing. The typing experience here has been subpar. Feels like a, a step backwards in comparison to my last phone, which had a more, you know, a larger, more traditional candy bar style design. But the aspect ratio here means that you've got this thin display, which is very tall. So this is the front screen, which they call the cover screen. And if I just show you an example, I am typing. You can see that I rely on autocorrect a lot. We all do. But in comparison to my older phones, I make a lot more mistakes on this phone. I, I just seem to mess up a lot and I'm relying on autocorrect a lot more. And autocorrect sometimes gives you the wrong word. It's just overall a very cramped experience. It's just not as nice to type on. Now, you would think, well, the benefit of having the Fold 4 is that it folds. That is the selling point here. I am typing. Um, this is a test. Now, this looks like amazing. Why not open it up? Why not type here? But when it's cramped with the, the, the cover screen, with the main screen here, when it's opened up in tablet mode, it's the opposite problem where everything is so wide. You know, it, it's just horrible to type on this. I just feel like the keyboard is too big. Now, there's workarounds to this. You, you've obviously got like the pen that you can do, there's voice recognition, and you can change the keyboard so that it's all like to the right or all to the left. But I've just found that in tablet mode, it's even worse. It's just horrible typing on the tablet uh, screen. So I love the tablet mode, and I'll talk about that later. You know, I love browsing the web, I love watching videos in tablet mode. But when I need to actually type something in, I've actually found myself making so many mistakes that I've flip the phone back over into just regular phone mode and then started typing what I wanted, search the web and then opened it back up because I just find this really hard. I um, You can see it's, 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 you know, I'm getting, I'm messing up now. I am beh behind the camera here, but that does illustrate the problem that I've got. So to summarize, you know, the, the with this larger screen here, for me, I, I've always found it just, it's too wide, it's just not comfortable. Whereas when with the front screen, it's very, very cramped. And it, it, it's just the price you pay for this design. The second negatives here relates to the displays. The first one being the aspect ratio of the front screen, the cover screen, can cause some issues with certain applications. And the second issue relates to the tablet screen, which as you can see, gathers dust very, very easily. Now it is worth noting that both of these displays are very, very nice. They're very bright, they're AMOLED, they have a high pixels per inch, and they both have support of up to 120 hertz for the refresh rate, which is obviously fantastic for games and you know for movies, etc. as well. But the aspect ratio is an issue. Now, as you saw there, it was the aspect ratio was a problem for typing. It's not really a, a problem per se in the tablet mode, but I do feel that for the front cover screen here, that aspect ratio does rear its ugly head in a lot of situations because many applications just haven't been optimized for this weird aspect ratio. Now, a good example of that is YouTube Shorts. It's maybe not apparent on my videos um, just because of the way that I shoot them, but what's actually happening here is that it's kind of being cut off. You know, there's parts of this video that's been cut off here because 
of the, the aspect ratio here. So you're not seeing that. Now you're not really noticing it here, but in other videos you do notice it, that there's something happening off the side of the YouTube short and you just can't see it. Now that's not a problem when you open it up uh, in tablet mode, but you do have borders at the side. So when it comes to the aspect ratio, it's not really a problem here in the tablet mode. You do get some borders, but it's generally fine. But I have noticed that there's many applications that just don't look right with this aspect ratio. So it is something to be aware of. It's not a deal breaker. It's, it's not even something that annoys me with most apps, but there are some applications that just don't work well with this aspect ratio. And with regards to dust, you can see here that it is a dust magnet, like that. So you do have to clean it a lot if you if you don't want to see finger marks and, and dust, etc. Now, the main reason for that is that there's kind of like a screen protector over the AMOLED display. That's why it doesn't look as crisp as the front here. There's a, a screen protector put on here to help with the folding mechanism. And you can see it down here. It just helps it all stick together. You can take it off. But it does mean that the inner display gathers dust very, very easily, especially if you're putting this in your jeans pockets, etc. So dust is something that does annoy me sometimes because if, if you don't stay on top of it, one time you open it up and you're like, oh, I need to clean it again. So yeah, aspect ratio for the front screen and dust in the middle. Two things that you have to deal with. The third issue that I have with the Fold 4 is something that I have an issue with with many other phones as well. And it's the fact that the phone is incredibly slippy. Now, you see that with most modern phones that are out of the box, they're shiny and they look amazing, but they're kind of not practical. So you end up putting a case on it so that they don't fall out your hand. That was especially so with the Fold 4. So if you look back at my unboxing and you look back at the video where I applied this case to the Fold 4, you'll know that this phone is incredibly slippy, more so than most other phones. Now that can be remedied with a case, but the Samsung Fold 4 doesn't have a great selection of third-party cases. In my opinion, they're all a bit too big, a bit heavy. So I think the Samsung, the official Samsung cases are the ones to go for. But the official Samsung cases are expensive and they're slippy as well. So take this one, for example. This was the, the kind of combo option that you can put a pen or the standing case, which broke very quickly. It's just not well made. But this case here, it might look great, it might be thin, it might look elegant, but it's super slippy. It really is super slippy. Now, when you add the pen, the pen kind of remedies that a little bit because it becomes like a natural grip. If you see it here, you kind of hold it like this a lot, but then your phone becomes, well, it looks like that. It's a lot bigger, it's, it's not as slim line. Now, there is an official grip cover that does address this problem, but that particular case does not have any holder for the Samsung S Pen. So yeah, out of the box, the Samsung Fold 4 is incredibly slippy. In my opinion, the Samsung cases are the best, but their cases don't really do enough to address, uh, to address the fact that these phones are slippy. So from a grip point of view, it's not been ideal. Negative number four is the fact that the Samsung Galaxy Fold 4 is a chunky monkey. Yes, this front display is thin and tall, but it's thick and it's heavy. This phone is essentially two phones stuck together. That's really what you're working with here. And if I get it in focus here, you can see what I'm talking about. This is my old phone here, very dusty. And this is my work phone, another Samsung phone. And that's the thing, you know, when I started going back to using this older, thinner, normal size phone, you do start looking at this again, going, wow, this is so heavy, it's so chunky, it is thicker in your jeans, it is bigger in your hand, it is heavier. And you do get used to it to an extent, you know, whatever phone you're using, you do kind of get used to it and you get used to how it works, you get used to its weight and its size but it's still there. It's a heavy phone, it's a chunky phone, and that is the price you pay for having a phone that opens up into a tablet. My final complaint about the Samsung Galaxy Fold 4 is the cost of having one. The reality is that folding phones, yes, there's more coming out, but they are still a premium feature, they are still quite niche, and you can be paying as much for a folding phone as you would for a top of the range iPhone, which is equally 
very expensive. Now the price of this phone is there in black and white when you buy it. No surprises, there's the price, do you want it? Okay. But one thing you have to factor into your buying decision is depreciation. It's a hidden cost and it is something you need to be aware of. This particular model, new, because it's got 512 gigabytes of storage, it retailed at £1,750. Now, I bought it nearly new from CEX, but it still cost me a whopping £1,440. I used some vouchers, thankfully, but it was a very expensive purchase. So, fast forward eight or nine months, £1,440. This phone, now, if I want cash, I would get £550. If I want a voucher, I would get £680. So from a voucher exchange point of view, I have lost £760 over nine months. More than that, if I, if I want cash. Yes, I could get a little bit more if I sell it on eBay, but the reality is, is that the depreciation on these phones are very, very high. You might have to spend £1,500 or two grand on this phone, a year later, you're probably going to be losing about a grand. Now, Samsung do have some good exchange policies in place when the new phone comes out. And, you know, if you don't want to keep the phone for two or three years, the reality is folding phones are very expensive. And the people that want these phones tend to want the newest features with all the gadgets and, you know, all the, the flashing lights and, and, and coolest new features. So if you do buy one of these phones, you're going to get hit by a lot of depreciation when you sell it. Just something that you all have to be aware of. Okay, now that we've got all of those complaints out of the way, we can focus on the positives, and there are many reasons to love the Samsung Galaxy Fold 4. Number one for me is the camera system. This was a top priority for me because my wife and I welcomed a son into the world last year, and my last phone you know, the photos and videos this was producing, it, it, they didn't look great, you know, it just wasn't there, you know, it looked great three years ago, four years ago, but not anymore. So I was looking for a modern camera system, and that's what I got here. Since day one, I've been so happy with, with the front sensor here and the triple camera system at the back. The photos and the videos have all been excellent. So you've got 10 megapixels there, you've got 12, 50, and 10 with the triple camera system, and then you've got a four megapixel sensor here too. This one isn't as good, but as long as the lighting is good, it, it's great for Zoom calls and team calls, which is basically what it was designed for. So I've been very, very happy with the photo and video quality since day one. And I know a lot of YouTubers out there, they'll do these reviews and they'll nitpick and compare the, you know, the latest iPhone with the latest Pixel with the latest Samsung phone. And those comparisons are valid. But for me, I was just looking for, you know, something that was in the pack, something that did produce really good photos and videos, and that's what I got with this phone. And if you've watched any of my YouTube short shots over the last uh, several months, apart from, I think, one or two GoPro videos, they've all been recorded with this phone, and I've not used any external microphones. So what you've heard here is the microphone coming from the Samsung Galaxy Fold 4, and I've just, I've been very, very happy with it. You know, I realize technology moves forward quite quickly and, you know, there's always new features, bigger camera sensors, one inch camera systems, etc. I've been just so happy with this since day one. The second positive for me has been the speaker quality, the audio quality from the Fold 4. And that is something that has surprised me because it was not something that I was prioritizing. You know, I've had phones in the past that I was happy with and they had tiny speakers, but here the audio quality is really good. The bass is good, volume is loud, it feels vibrant. I've just been very happy with it. And if you're an audiophile, you can check out all the tech specs, but I'm going to attempt a very poor demonstration here with this copyright free video. <laughs> So it's very hard for me to demonstrate what the audio quality is like from my end to, to you. But what I will say is that previously with my old phone, I was connecting a Bluetooth speaker a lot when I was listening to Spotify or watching videos on YouTube and Netflix, etc. when I was in the kitchen or living room. But I don't do that as much anymore. Quite, it's quite rare for me to do that now because the gap, in, you know, the difference in quality between 
the audio here and, and the, the Bluetooth speaker that I've got, that gap has been shortened. And you know, this doesn't replace a Bluetooth speaker, I'm not saying it does, but this has reached a level now where I, I don't always turn on the Bluetooth speaker, it just doesn't feel like it's worthwhile doing, it feels more like a hassle. So I've been very happy with the audio here, not something I was looking for, but a very pleasant surprise. Positive number three for me is battery life. This is something which is very important to me. I am a heavy smartphone user, and even more so with this phone because it's a phone and it's a tablet. Now we can have a separate conversation about smartphone addiction, but I do use this for pretty much everything. This is my computer on the go. I use it for emails, I use it for messaging, I use it for browsing the web, I use it for shopping, I use it for Netflix, YouTube, Spotify, games, a lot. I'm on this phone a lot. I realize that's not always good, but I am a heavy user and I do use my phone a lot. And you can see here, you know, 50% battery, 21 hours. I'm not going to get that because I'm using this, but it does show you that on standby, this phone will last a long time. You know, you go out for the day and you've only got a 50% charge, that will get you through the day as long as you're not you know, using it too much. So there are a lot of cool features here. It's got um, power saving mode, something which I use. It, it does drop the refresh rate, but I'm happy with that. Uh, it's got wireless power sharing, and there's a lot of other options here that you can enable and dis disable. But the main one for me here is the protect battery option. So I charge this up to 85% to prolong the lifespan of the battery. And even with the fact that I only charge this up to 85% and not 100%, with heavy usage, this will get me through the day. And if I'm not using my phone a lot, you know, if I'm doing something and it's just in my pocket and I'm not using it, you're lucky if I drop 10, 15, 20% during the day. It just, it, it's got really good standby time and the battery life is really good, which I guess is to be expected because, you know, you've got batteries in both places here. And yeah, battery life is very good. But you have to obviously temper your expectations. If you're sitting on YouTube all day, you're playing games in tablet mode with both screens open, you're going to burn through the battery more. You will have to charge it. But in comparison to, you know, the, the smaller iPhones or some other phones out in the market, the battery life here is impressive. The fourth thing which I really love about the Fold 4 is Samsung's customized Android skin, which they call Samsung One UI. This was something that was a surprise to me because in the past, Samsung phones were really bloated, all these apps you couldn't uninstall, Bixby buttons, etc. That is still there to an extent. There's a lot of Samsung apps there, but for the most part, they do enhance the experience. Now, Samsung have improved their UI across the board with all their phones, but they've really tailored the experience here for a folding phone. So if you're browsing the web, you can then put um, a YouTube video in, you just drag and drop. If you go, I don't like it there, you can go up like that. You can see there's a little favorite favorite there if you want to have it like that and you can access it, you know, that kind of setup more easily. Um, and, you know, I could put other browser windows here if I want, uh, like that. And if I want, I could put, you know, something here as well. You've got great control, you know, you can basically have like four or five different screens here and you can switch between them. There's also, you can see this little, um, down the bottom here, there's little like quick access buttons. You've got them up here as well. You can access all of your applications there too. And they've really thought that out. And there's a lot of things that are sprinkled around the whole UI, you know, whether it be taking notes with the pen or, you know, switching between apps. But there's a lot of multitasking features here to help you get the most out of it. Now, as I said, there's some apps that are not optimized for the front screen, and, and that's the same here as well. For example, with Netflix, it always forces you to turn this way when you're watching a movie. It's a minor complaint. It's really Netflix that's doing that, not the phone. So there are some applications that just aren't optimized for tablet mode, but for the most part, Samsung have done a great job here of just making the whole tablet and phone experience seamless. And you know, it's one of the things I love about this phone. Multitasking on this is great. I'm a bit of a fidget, I watch a YouTube video, I leave comments, I'm browsing the web at the same time. This lets me indulge all of that. And yeah, it's, it's definitely a selling point of this phone for me. You can do so much on this phone at the same time. So it's a huge positive. And, and I did, you can see here, I did try many of the launchers. I thought I would use one of these. 
but I kept coming back to Samsung One UI. I think they've done a really good job here. The last thing that I want to talk about is the thing that I love most about this phone, and it's that tablet mode is amazing. It really is. And that's obviously why you buy a phone like this, to get that larger display. It's so versatile, it's so useful, and it really is amazing. Now, day to day, you know, everyone's going to use this phone differently. For me, I'll maybe open it up in tablet mode in the morning, but most of the day, this is how I use this phone. It's the thin and tall phone that's chunky, and you have to deal with the aspect ratio, and typing is cramped, and all the rest of it. But this is how I'm using it during the day. It's in my pocket. I pull it out. This is how I'm using it. But I go home at night. I sit on the couch. I lie in bed. I play a game. I watch a movie. I multitask. You know, you just open it up and you have this whole new experience. I don't have to reach for a separate tablet. This is always with me on trains. When I'm chilling somewhere, you know, if you've got time to kill, open it up in tablet mode. You know, for the most part, on a, on a, on a work day, I've got it in phone mode as you call it. I've got it in that mode all day, but when you come home and you open it up, you just put it into tablet mode, and, and it's so amazing when you do so. Um, I'll turn the volume down just now, but just, you know, just doing this, it, you can see the borders here, but it is so practical, and it's just an amazing experience. It really is, and, and, it's, and it's worth Putting up with all the you know the weight and the size and all the rest of it is worth putting up for all of that just to get the tablet experience at the end of it. You know everything else here, the size, the weight, and you know the kind of funny aspect ratio with the front screen. That's the cost of having a folding phone. And I, I, I will admit, sometimes during the day, it's, this phone's heavy or the aspect ratio is annoying in certain situations. But it's all worth it in the end when you come home and you, and you open it up or when you're on the train and you open it up and you've got that full tablet. You're not watching a video or a movie or listening. You're not doing anything on a small screen. You open up and you've got this super huge display to work with. Great for movies, great for games, great for everything really. And it, it is the best selling feature of this. The fact that this does open out you know, this isn't a folding phone that's small that goes normal. This is a normal phone that goes big, goes to tablet mode. That is the very idiotic way of explaining it, but it's also true. You know, it's a regular phone most of the time when you're using it, but when you sit and chill, when you're listening to music, when you're watching films, this thing is amazing. It really is. So there you have it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed listening to my thoughts on the Samsung Galaxy Fold 4, which I've owned for nearly nine months at this point. Fundamentally, this is a premium phone. It's got a premium price tag, but it does tick all of the right boxes. It's got a top of the range camera system, great photo, video, microphone quality, good battery life, good speakers. It just ticks all the right boxes that you would expect a premium phone to tick. But the reason you buy this is that it's a folding phone. You open it up and you have this tablet experience. Now the tablet experience does come at a cost. This phone is thicker than most phones. It's heavier than most phones. And the aspect ratio of the front screen is a bit weird. You know, and most apps and most situations aren't optimized for that. So you do have some compromises with typing and with the odd application. Now, that might be a deal breaker for some people, but for me, it's all worth it when you open the phone. You get this amazing multitasking, media-friendly consumption device. You know, this tablet is amazing in so many situations. I love playing games in it, movies, multitasking, YouTube, browsing at the same time, leaving comments, reading. It just fits in with how I use my smartphone. So it's not the perfect phone. There are some downsides to it, you know, with the weight and the size and, you know, the third party cases and, and the Samsung cases aren't amazing. But I'm happy with the compromises I've made in order to get that tablet experience. And moving forward, I know that these folding phones are going to get better, lighter, thinner, and you'll still get that optimized phone tablet experience. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. If you get any questions, please do post them below. And until next time, take care.